everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. So, hello. Good morning. Hello, guys. Welcome to Unite. Woo-hoo. Welcome to the education room. <laughs> how was, uh, just, just a heat check, how was everyone after the keynote? Everyone good? Everyone yeah. like the keynote? Yeah. Unity 6? Unity 100? I don't 6. know. 6.1, maybe? 6.1? Nah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Kirk. I'm the community manager for education and social impact. Uh, you are in the education room where we'll be doing the education track. Uh, if I see some students here and some people from Unity as well. So stick around afterwards to connect with some people from our team. So definitely do that. And uh, we'll be doing this for two days. So we'll have this session on uh, growing industry and uh, growing in industry. And then after this, in 30 minutes, after the session, we'll have a Meet the Creators panel with some of uh, the social impact creators that we have at the Unity for Humanity uh, program. Does that sound cool? Awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, hi again. And uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna click through because we have slides. That's me from a long, long time ago. <laughs> I'm gonna let my short uh, hair. I know, right? Isn't this weird? <laughs> I just uh, also have a seat. Sorry, okay, I didn't okay. invite you. Cool. We have seats. We just like naturally sat down. I'm gonna let my guests introduce themselves. So first. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Kirk. I'm Jessica. Um, I am the head of our ecosystem, which means education, community, advocacy. Um, and I've been at Unity over seven years. Before that, I built a company on Unity. And so I'm really excited to both um, talk to you today and also hear feedback and questions that you have. So please don't hesitate to interrupt us and reach out. Awesome. And then to my immediate left. Hey, uh, I'm Tall Guy. I'm an industrial engineer and a business admin. Uh, I do own a company with 15 people with my co-founder, and we do generally work with industrial clients. I'm also a certified instructor for Unity, and we are like five, six instructors today at Unite. So come meet with us uh, if you want to learn anything about Unity. There we go. He knows everything about Unity. So you should test him and ask him about everything that you need. And then re- <laughs> report it to Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I'm going to go back a few slides just to set the table. Because we do have a show of hands. How many students are in the room right now? Students? Students? Awesome. Uh, raise a hands. Unity people? How many Unity folks are former? Cool. And then industry folks? People in industry? People getting ready to hire? Hi. Hire <laughs> these people up here. And then wait, what's the in-between real quick? Just in the moment. Teachers. teachers. Oh, Any teachers? Hey. Hello. Uh, I'm also the community manager for education, so we should all totally talk. So uh, this session is about growing in the industry, getting your first job. Uh, you're smiling there. I, I, see, I see that face. It's like, it's such a weird time in the world in general, but also in games. Uh, it's really hard across time to get a job in the industry. And you know, us at Unity, we're always thinking about not only how we create the tools to let you make your games, but in the end all, in your stage of students, you have to get into industry. You have to make your connections. You have to find your first job. So this is a little session about uh, talking about our experience coming up, uh, maybe some tips about working on your personal brand, how to sell yourself to employers, just getting in that mindset of like, how do you just get your foot in the door and then just like pushing yourself forward. So that is actually a good place to start. Uh, I know we've had, <laughs> we have some really interesting stories between us, but like if y'all want to take a two minutes each, like how did y'all get started in industry? True. How did you get into video games? Jessica, it's all yeah. Jessica? All right, I have a, a long meandering story. Um, so I, um, in the middle of undergrad, um, ended up getting an internship. I'm obviously American, you can tell my, by, by my accent. <laughs> I ended up getting an internship in Washington, D.C., working for the, the Federal Communication Commission. Ooh. And for those of you who don't know, the FCC, as it's known, uh, really focuses on regulatory work. Um, at that point in time, it was regulatory work against the telephone company. So there was this like big, like, what do we do with AT&T? We need to break up the, the monopoly, et cetera. So um, my undergrad was economics, and my job at the FCC, when I walked in the door, 
They put me in a windowless room for the entire summer by myself and said, can you look at this whole internet thing and see if we should regulate it? (laughs) So that obviously dates me as well. This was 1994. So I spent the entire summer studying the internet and I came to the conclusion that yes, they should regulate it. (laughs) And because they gave it to an intern, I sort of knew that nobody would like read my work or look at it. Um, But obviously right after undergrad, like the next day, I um, took all of my graduation gifts and uh, arrived in San Francisco. And that's where I've been for the last 30 years. Um, My primary focus in the first part of my career was really looking at education and economic opportunity and technology. Um, So a lot of ed tech companies, and what I realized during that journey of about 10 or so years was that all that anybody wanted to do was play video games. In fact, they were playing more video games, spending more time playing video games than they were in school. Um, So I did a total, (laughs) which all of you know, so I did a total 180 (laughs) at that point. It's fine. Um, (laughs) And I ended up running um, this learning game company that I built on Unity. We were housed at both Electronic Arts and Zynga, so our team would go back and forth between those two companies. And I got even more of a feel for um, what it's like working with all of you who grew up gaming and then eventually joined Unity because I realized it was an incredible on-ramp to careers in the 21st century. So a lot of what you'll hear about today is not my career advice because the best career advice you can get is from people who are one or two steps above you. What you'll hear from me is um, advice that I hear from the over one million students that we work with and then the millions of adults that we get to work with every year who are upskilling into jobs that are built on Unity. Nice. Awesome. Tolga, how about you? So, um, after my graduation, I'm Turkish by the way, so after my graduation I decided to go to London and do a master's. Most of the people wants to do that, just to not work, you know. Oh, okay. I'm just, gonna do just, it. Delay it. Yeah. just delay the inevitable. Like, <laughs> I, I was doing double major back in a bachelor's degree and then I was like very overwhelmed because I was having like 42 hours of just lessons every every week basically so I was like a full-time employee and I'm like okay I'm not gonna do anything for a year I'm just gonna play World of Warcraft I think I have like 700 days of play or something like one third of my life (laughs) so yeah don't feel bad about yourself like Jessica (laughs) says if you're you're playing a game just tell that you're playing a game or games yeah yeah, exactly Um, because I'm an industrial engineer I decided to start uh, in the industry I uh, decided to do some sales but I hated it for like two months so I'm like okay let me go and uh, learn how to build stuff so uh, I changed a couple of jobs but Afterwards, I've found myself in a, uh, in a manufacturing facility where they're uh, manufacturing powder coating machinery. Worked there for three years, met with my co-founder, quit the job, opened up my own company. We are now 15 people. Okay. And now we basically work most of the, uh, most, most with the industrial uh, factories to create time for them, either with visualization with Unity or Autodesk products, mostly with Unity products, by the way. Um, so yeah, here I am uh, awesome. teaching Unity also. Yeah. yeah, and that's something we'll get into later. So Tolga and I used to work together when I was a professional trainer. So I used to teach people how to use Unity in industry. So for example, Mercedes Benz uses like Unity in all of their dashboards. So I had to go in, make sample projects to teach them, and then Tolga or actually Juan, Juan, yeah, Juan was the one. <laughs> Juan actually yelled at me because I messed up that project. But there's the opportunities all over the place. So I think it's like a really uh, interesting place that you're coming from. Sure, of course. I am that person that Jessica is talking about. Uh, I'm probably like one or two steps. I feel like I'm still one or two steps away from y'all because I feel like I was just in school last year. But I've been in the industry for over ten years now. Uh, I started as an indie developer in New York City, but before that, I'm actually the worst person to be on this panel because I've dropped out of college twice. Or the best. Or the best. Or the best. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, did, I did get into James Madison University and University of Virginia in the United States. That is not easy. It's not easy to get into. <laughs> it was engineering school too, so everyone's like, how do I learn how to make games? Oh, I should totally be a computer science major. Or it could be, if that's like really what you want. And after that, I was like, school sucks. I don't like being in front of lecture halls or waking up at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. So 
I quit school the second time. I started a company with my sister and my best friend from like third grade. We did a events platform, which was like TED Talks for Filipinos. So we'd go to like Canada, we'd go to UK, uh, LA. We talk with like YouTubers, musicians, cooks, and we'd like talk and do stuff like this. Uh, and then I hated that because I was just like, I still like to play, not World of Warcraft for 70 hours, but like Halo 3. I used to be a competitive Halo player and uh, I'm still a competitive Street Fighter player. And I'm like, I love video games. I should try doing that. So I, I took a bus from Virginia. Uh, if you're in the United States on the East Coast, I took a bus from Virginia to California, three days. And I was just wanted to like find myself. And it's funny because in the keynote, I don't know if you all saw Rambod, uh, one of the things that I did when I was in LA was this festival called IndieCade, and they're still around. And I went there and there were hundreds of indie games. There were people who were making it for weird reasons to show off on the Switch. And I'm like, you could do this on your own? And I was so excited. And that literally spun me up. And Rambot is like one of my old friends from that festival. And we ran into each other here. So after 11 years, wow. he's like, here you are now. And I'm like, this is weird. Here we are now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm the one or two steps above. So I'll, I'll be here for questions. So yeah, speaking of getting to the one or two steps, you know, past school, uh, another raise of hand. So y'all are in school, this side of the room. Uh, anybody in there last year? What, what year? Okay, we have some seniors. Hello. Okay. Sophomores, second year, third year? Second year. Okay, second year. awesome. Still getting there. So think about jobs. Great. So you have a panel that will kind of give you the insight about, yeah, what are the trends? What's cool right now in the industry? Like, what are you all seeing? Like, for instance, Tolga, you're in industry, yeah. not in games. Sure. And we talk a lot about how it is hard to get into the games industry. Yep. Like, what do you see from your side of the world in terms of hiring people? So um, we obviously work with game companies as well, but our expertise is behind the industry. So what yeah. I'm seeing now, and for the past four years probably when I'm teaching Unity, I tell all the students, let's say you're a lawyer, right? Let's say you're doing a law study. Just get your foundational expertise from your school and then put on and cre create some type of experience. It doesn't have to be a game, mm -hmm. but it could be a gamified ex experience so that you can create like real-time experiences. That's what I tell everyone, because the gaming industry is, of course, quite saturated, and uh, it's a very highly competitive thing, mm -hmm. but you have to innovate, like we have to innovate as human beings. So what I'm, like, what I'm seeing in the future is everyone's gonna create, especially with Unity or similar engines, new experiences that looks like games, but like helpful for our daily lives, like sure. augmented reality, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, the industry sector, however, is not that much aware of the gaming industry for real-time applications. Yeah. So the awareness is building up now. Yeah. So in five years' time, there's going to be a ton of Unity generalists, especially, yeah. jobs available for people who wants to work in the industry because they're going to be a very scarce resource. Right, yeah, it's kind of like the hot topic now if you're in automotive or maybe in architecture. And it is like the dream of a lot of students to say, go to Riot Games or let's go to Blizzard. And those are like so competitive, like sure. tens of thousands of students to like one or two jobs. So like it is interesting. I, I saw that too when I was in pro training where, okay, you might not get to that studio, but this car company who's using your, your 3D skills and you maybe not even learn in just Unity, maybe you're using Unreal, you know, maybe you're using other tools and they want to hire you to do those things. It's such a good launching pad for it. Yeah. yeah. Jessica, how about you? What have, what have you been seeing lately, especially in your position? Because now you're like the VP of ecosystem or eco. Sorry, I don't I forgot the name of our team. <laughs> sorry, we're in charge. It's of, okay. Yeah, you can Doesn't go ahead matter. and say Yeah, don't don't judge me, please. <laughs> don't, don't yell at me after this. But you're I mean, you see the, the, the landscape of, of the growth. In well, our, I think, in our community. yeah, I mean, I think Kirk, Kirk knows this. We as a team have actually been writing a book over the last two years about careers and not just careers within the gaming industry, but careers in general. So I just want to set the stage. 
uh, for a few moments about what we've learned. Number one is all of us are still being raised. I was raised like back millennia ago of like, if you just work really hard in school and you get great grades, yeah. then you get to go to college. And then if you get great grades there, then you'll get an amazing job and you'll live happily ever after. And nothing could be further from the truth. It's like <laughs> so wrong. Um, as Kirk even said, you don't even have to go to college. What you do have to be prepared for though, is that on average right now, we are spending only about four years with an employer, and then we move right into a new employer and a new job. And so your career is actually about 10 to 15 different types of jobs, half of which have not even been invented yet. And what you're trying to master is what is that set of experiences that you're going through every time you're moving into that next four-year cycle? What they are is, let me figure out what I want to do, how do I actually upskill or reskill into this? So what you're doing in college doesn't end. You're going to do it your entire Whole life. life. Yeah. Then how do I actually get the job? How do I like get the holy grail of the job? And then when you are actually in the role, you end up what's called job crafting into a new opportunity. You either kind of change your existing role into something new, or you actually leave that company and go into a different employer. I am, as Kirk said, I'm on my third job at Unity. I'm starting my eighth year, so it kind of averages out. I've had two jobs over the last seven and a half years. I'm starting my third job. So what you're really trying to master are those steps that I just described of how you're determining what you want to do, capturing those skills, getting the opportunity, moving into the job successfully, and continuing on. What we're seeing right now and how that's translating into the industry is that it's very focused on skills. It's not as focused on the caliber of your degree. It's focused on the skills that you've honed and that you've obtained there, but not just your technical skills. In fact, even more importantly, what are called your durable or your soft skills. So how well do you communicate? How well can you work in groups uh, and teams and collaborate with other people? How great of a creative thinker are you? How strong of a critical thinker are you? So those skills are just as, if not more important than the technical skills that you're gaining. So it's not about, oh my God, AI is the next new thing. I've got a master. AI, it's really about how are you continuously upskilling and reskilling yourself throughout the course of your career. And the great news, in my opinion, is it, you know, a hundred years ago when I was starting off my career, a lot more of it was about who you knew, what family you were born into, what community you were born into. And it's not as much weighted on that. You can actually create this community. So most important in all of this is the people in the room, the people at this conference, and how you build that community. So I love it when people interrupt me, stop me, ask to get to know me, set up a 30-minute informational interview. That's my biggest tip today, is figure out where you want to work, yes. figure out who you're connected to, you know, number two connections, and ask for introductions to those people, and just fill your time with informational interviews with people who are either doing what you want to do or at the place that you eventually want to go to. I'm sorry, that was, that was like, No, so that long. was amazing. That was, <laughs> a, that was awesome. And uh, I think you bring up a good point in the macro, which is like you, you're, you're framing yourself for those time frames, mm -hmm. but then also uh, regaining skills and uh, being able to collaborate across time uh, in the micro. So we did a student mixer yes, or two days ago and we got to do portfolio reviews and people were demoing their games at, you know, at the school. And a lot of the advice that was being given out is, you know, y'all are amazing creators, amazing artists, amazing programmers, game designers. But then being able to explain how you got to your idea, how you were intentional with, say, like the moving platform in your game, or even like the, the type of lighting that you chose for this, you know, scenery if you're a 3D artist, right? Those are the things that a lot of people in industry are looking for is that communication. Because at the end of the day, if I work with you, I'll be with you in the office five days a week, ideally six to eight hours of hard work, and it's like, I wanna make sure I can talk to you, sure, right? And, and hang out and, and collaborate and push our, our, you know, our thoughts forward. So I think that's a really good point in terms of thinking about how to be a good listener, how to be a good communicator, working on your soft skills as well as your technical skills, which segues very well to, uh, so, <laughs> 
This is a, a, an advice giving session as well. You've given some great like, you know, insight in terms of that framework, thinking about the time, the soft skill. So guy, you were talking about, you know, just not thinking about the games industry and thinking about industry. What would, out of all of the things that you've been talking about, or maybe you haven't said it yet, what's like, what would be the best thing if they forgot everything else about this session? Sure. Yeah, what would, what would y'all? want to give I mean um, we were like five people at some point I think this was like 2020 or 2020 yeah 2021 mm -hmm. I have a mentor which lives in uh, Brazil yeah it's a very very weird person uh, from the UK we were working on a project and then this was project is completely about industry right mm -hmm. and then one day he comes to me and says Hey, you do you play games? I'm like, yeah, sure, I play games. Oh, do you, did you know I made a game before when I was 13 years old? Mm -hmm. This guy's like 50. I'm like, wow, okay, that's uh, that sounds good. What's the game? It's Outrun. If you don't know Outrun, just go check it out. It's like one of the most cult games ever. So I'm like, wow, I I work with this guy. Yeah. It's crazy. So he became my mentor, and I decided to take his, you know, quotes and then grow my company with the, with the way he, uh, you know, told me stuff to. And this was completely free. But you have to find a person in your life that can mentor you. Uh, not, of course, it doesn't have to be free, but it has to be like a bit of a passionate thing. But you have to find a mentor, guys. Like, do it. Uh, and then my second best advice is, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, just open one. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, that's really good. You can scan LinkedIn QR codes now. Sure. We're awesome. living in the future. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Jessica, what about you? What's the piece of advice that impacted you the most? I think it was to never burn a bridge. Mm. Oh, that mm. every relationship you have. Any bridges? Any bridge. Don't ever burn any bridge. Yeah. Like, just keep every relationship that you've made. Um, don't walk away from them. They are the continued connections and opportunities that you have throughout your whole life. So keep those relationships and that community strong. Yeah. You're so zen, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, that's, true, that's kind of in passing, that is, I'm gonna get meta here. That is kind of funny, <laughs> but at the same time, that would be my piece of advice, which is like, we're talking very pragmatically right now. Sure. And we wanna get you jobs, but at the same time, off of your advice, it's not just uh, not burning any bridges, but in the end all, aside from working with you all, I'll probably be friends with you and I'm gonna spend time with you and we're gonna grow together. And I'm looking in this room right now, I've made so many friends yeah. that I could picture myself like growing up with. So I don't think it's just like work, it's like living a well-rounded life and being a good listener and a good, you know, just friend. I think that does translate a lot into your work because you know, we're always talking about games this is a passion industry and like people take advantage of that, which is absolutely true. And if you don't keep your sanity and your humanity, it doesn't, it's for naught, then you're just gonna be making games like you're making donuts. So you might as well be making donuts. So off of that, you know, don't burn any bridges, but also like get to know when you're doing those informationals, like those 30 minutes, try to get to know the person that you're meeting here at Unite, right? Like be really curious about them because it really does matter in the end, so. Um, okay. Wow, this is such a, I did not make these slides. This was Thomas. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna segue a bit because like I feel like there's a, oh, perfect. Yeah, we're not gonna do that slide. Uh, so we've been talking a lot about like how we work together, how we're gonna get our jobs. I think this is kind of the slide that I really wanted to touch on the most because, you know, when you are out of school, right, right now you're collaborating with your classmates, you get a grade at the end, and then it's kind of time boxes within a semester. But like I said, if we're going to be coworkers and working in industry, it's it's like a, almost a lifelong partnership. So in your everyday, like if you're maybe thinking of a junior, right, a junior right, dev, okay. or maybe like someone new to Unity, what do you admire the most in like those type of colleagues or colleagues in general? You want to go first, Jessica? For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I do think it's the ability to listen. I think that's just become an incredibly rare skill in our society today. Um, there's so much noise. There's so many people. That prior slide, I'm so glad you skipped over because I was like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I looked and I was like, this is not the vibe right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I oftentimes 
go through an experience um, and I start observing how much is this person or in this group setting, how much is the, these set of individuals actually listening to each other and creating that space. Um, because I think those are the individuals who can really lead with curiosity and come back um, with the right team approach to move us to move us all forward. So I think it's listening. Nice. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to say, yeah, the, the quality of the clothes that they're wearing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. Not. You look at their shoes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they're not Jordan's shoes. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've been to very many places, like industrial places, really dirty places, to uh, like uh, office buildings, to CEOs' offices, etc. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you're wearing, of course, but it matters if you know how to talk with other people. That's the most important thing. You have to be adaptive. So if, like, generally speaking, our colleagues are very adaptive people. Um, we have a very, very low turnaround rate. Like, the, if the person starts working with us, they just work. It's, it's good, to, good to say this. So uh, I generally love their ideas and uh, the way they work because they don't make their superiors uh, work more than them because this is like, when you're, in a, when you're in a company, everyone has their own uh, problems to solve. And uh, if a person is able to solve a problem most of the time by himself or herself, that's probably the most uh, admiration that we give to other people. And then, yeah, it becomes like life becomes easier for everyone in the company. Yeah. I'm going to jump off of that with a really like realistic, because I think even you go to these career panels, you get this advice a lot. And it's very high level. And it's really, these, this is really good advice. I'm gonna give like a very specific, if you're thinking about maybe a day in the life in the studio. So stay in, stay in, for instance, you're like in production, you're working on your game, and your design manager wants a feature, right? Usually when that feature happens, there's a lot of people involved. You have your stakeholders, there's a lot of expectations because you have to ship your game in time, or maybe it's like an industry app. And uh, there's all these things, right? So aside from listening, because there's so many things happening in the, in the beginning of a project, you have to be very organized. I admire colleagues who, are, who tell a really good story and who can like, really show me what I need to do to better collaborate with them. So uh, in school and in uh, studios, wikis, documentation, slide decks, those are underestimated. We're so used to like being in Maya, be writing the right code, being really performant, right? But in the end, even if you're like O of N, or that was like the perfect mesh with like the right amount of, you know, uh, geometry, it doesn't matter if like the other person won't know that's a good piece of model or a good piece of code, right? So you know, jumping off of the advice that y'all gave, it's like every day when you're doing good work, how do you stay organized and communicate well to tell that story? So then you could say, hey, you need that, you need that, what's the joke? <coughs> I, I, need, I need that enemy on level three, whatever the commercial <laughs> is on, t on American TV. Like, those are like funny scenes, but those are everyday scenes and being able to listen, being able to just, you know, be yourself and then being able to stay organized, I think, in your everyday, it's going to help you. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure you all are studying that right now in school. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to add one thing to oh, you. Yeah. Um, the documentation especially. The uh, manufacturing industry solved this issue 100 years, old, 100 years ago. So like, the gaming industry needs to learn a lot about documentation from yeah. the manufacturing industry. It's already a solved problem. Yeah. So yeah, uh, keep, in, keep in mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, OK. It's a very, it's a very relaxed session because looking for a job is really hard. So we want to keep it really low key. So we want to open it up to Q and A because this is for y'all. This is for the students. Like, uh, sorry, Unite is really expensive, and also there's a lot of like industry people here. But we want to be here for you. So anything that you have in mind in terms of like applying for jobs, uh, finding the right contacts, anything that we spoke about, please. Like, if you have any, and the teachers in here, I know. Teachers are in here because you're probably thinking as much about your students as yourself, so yeah.